Storm Nation, welcome to In the Bag. It's the Cheetah Championship coming up. Rushing the bowlers doesn't matter. No <laughs> rushing the bowlers. Here with Big West Mallott, got his ninth title, now two titles this year for uh, possible player of the year. Wes, what's it feel like to win again? Well, back-to-back -back titles, really, if you want to say it. Um, it's it's just it's great to be back in, in the circle. Uh, the U.S. Open was obviously the big one for me. Now winning this one, I think, kind of puts me in the chance for player of the year, especially all depending on what, what else happens and unfolds the rest of the week uh, over today and tomorrow. Uh, it definitely could be a possibility. So. Uh, the main thing, 
I mean, yes, I, obviously I want it. Uh, I probably more want to just make sure we bring it back to Utah. That's more important to me right now. Um, you know, Pete's bowled unbelievable this year. Uh, Belmo, I mean, I think it's up between the three of us, so it should be coming. And, uh, you know, those guys, including yourself, Louie, all you guys, it's, it's a big team effort. And I want to thank you guys personally for everything we do, and that's why I want to bring it home for, for the team. Now, today we saw Wes use the totally defiant, and the totally defiant was totally defiant today. Talk up a little bit about that ball. You know, uh, that ball, you know, you hear us talk a lot sometimes, uh, you know, this ball is great. We never even, the high-end balls we typically don't get to use on tour just because we don't see enough volume of oil. And, you know, finally we're able to do that this week. And so to see some of the higher-end balls go down the lane and, you know, people think, oh, we're just, you know, filling them full of a bunch of bull. And it, we're really not. It's just we don't get to throw them. And it's nice to finally get to, to be able to throw them. And today, as you could tell there towards the end of the match, when I really wasn't focused, when it was pretty much over in the 8th, ninth, and 10th, you know, I just told you how good I had to throw it and how things had to be there to be able to do it. And if I didn't have that ball, these guys wanted me to change balls, and I just I stuck with it. Uh, Weber gave you all you could handle, uh, and you answered with 289. Uh, did you feel like you were playing spoiler by, by defeating Clara, another female that made it, and then Weber, who's trying to get that uh, player of the year title? Um, it definitely is all part of it. I mean, you know, I struggled a little bit the first game on the left lane. It was a little tricky. And, again, that just shows you how good I had to throw it. And to be able to, to step up in the 10th and be able to throw the double to put pressure on her, uh, kind of gets the monkey off my back. I, I'm, I'm kind of sick of hearing it a little bit. I mean, yeah, I try and have a little bit of fun with it, but in the back of my mind, it, it's still there. Um, and it's unfortunate for Claire. She had to take the brunt end of that, but because uh, she's a great friend, lives in the same town, Pflugerville. So, uh, you know, it kind of stinks, but at the same time, I needed to do it for myself and then go on. And, and Pete was obviously a big match. As I mentioned, we're all kind of in the player of the year race. So, uh, you know, we'll let it unfold and see what happens. Here with Randy Peterson. Randy, what a cool show today. We had Pete and Wes, we had Clara Guerrero, and then, of course, Parker Bone, bad to the bone. What did you see from the booth? Well, uh, I, I saw the, the lanes uh, a little tricky at first to start, and, you know, I thought Clara did, did, uh, did a great job. She kept the ball in the pocket, only missed once, had a little trouble getting her ball to finish high enough to strike, and Wes looked like he was, uh, he was in big trouble. And it looked like the lanes started to, tr to finally blend out a little bit. And once they did, Wes could use his hand and that totally defined. And then all of a sudden it was a strike fest. At one point he threw 20 out of 21 strikes. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for Parker, he had no luck on the left lane. And, you know, that, that happens. And that's happened before uh, in our sport. It's happened before to him. And it's probably not going to be the, the last time that's something, that we see something like that. So unfortunate for him. Really great for Storm and Rotor Grip, and another great win for Wes Malott. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, Weber match. Weber gave him all he can handle for a while. What did you see uh, from up in the booth uh, with Pete Weber versus Wes Malott? Well, I saw a couple of things. One, uh, you know, they were they were dead even after uh, five and a half frames, six frames. Uh, they both have the front six, and all of a sudden Pete bounced one, and it pushed light, and he left that shaker 10. The very next shot, he bounces it again. Uh, can't remember if the split came right after that. Okay, so then he splits again right after that, and it, it looked like he got the ball to the dry early. Ball goes through the face, match is pretty much over. The other thing that I saw was how classy Pete Weber is, and I don't think I, I don't think he gets enough credit for for what a great sport he, uh, a great sportsman he is. He got up and through the ninth and tenth frame about as fast as humanly possible, where most will probably interpret that as Pete just being pissed off and wanting to just get off the set. He did it to get out of the way so Wes Malott didn't have to sit and wait any longer than he needed to so that he had an opportunity to get up in bowl 300. Here with Del Ballard Jr. and he's got the best seat in the house. This is the seat that uh, Wes Malott was just sitting in to win the title. Uh, what did you see out there, Del, uh, from Wes and his ball reaction? Well, early on, he was really having a hard time getting his ball to pick up on the left lane. And I even made a suggestion, hey, we got a Marvel S. He goes, it went too long. I said, well, I scuffed it again. I said, if it gets bad against Clary and you get behind 30 and you need to make a guess, you know what, give it a shot. Because we knew after the second frame, fourth frame, once he, whenever he two-pinned, that, uh-oh, here it comes. Here comes the, the deal. So we knew he had to move left and slow down, basically like he had all the deal. And we saw Weber use the IQ Tour, the IQ Tour solid. 
Uh, talk a little about his ball choice on TV today. It was working really well for him. Yes, uh, they were tighter today than, than what they practiced on. Uh, I hit his ball with 2,000. It went a little long. I hit it harder with 2,000, and then all of a sudden it started reading the lane pretty good, and, and he had the first five with it. He loved his ball reaction. He said he stuck on the right lane a little bit, kind of missed it at the bottom, so he blowered 10, and I think he made sure, and then it bounced on the left lane and went through the nose. And by then, you know, Wes already had the first six, and it's kind of hard to beat. Sure is. So, so far, World Series of Bowling, we've made uh, every show, and so far here at the Cheetah, we've won our first one. It's one to nothing right now, Storm Rotogrip. It's early, but I like our chances. There you have it here from the World Series.